Here's what we have in our lineup today on the now. Nursing home costs are rising faster than any other medical care, and we're going to be looking at where you can find the lowest prices and another option you may want to consider to save. And the FDA is out with new information on certain diets and dog foods linked to a potentially deadly heart disease. The food brands involved and the simple action pet owners can take to prevent this disease. And we're talking one on one with astronaut Scott Kelly. What experiments from his one year mission in space? could reveal about how we age. Thank you, Annie. I'm Rafael Sanchez, and this is the Now Indy on RTV6. You may have to dig deeper into your pockets starting in July. The Indiana Utility Regulatory Commission has approved a two-step rate hike for customers of Indiana American Water. Now, here's what you're looking at as it comes down the pike. According to the figures from American Water, a monthly bill will go up just under 1% beginning in July. A customer who pays $40 per month would see an increase of less than 40 cents. And in May of next year, the second rate of the second part of that rate hike goes into effect. That increase will go up to 6.3% or about $2.50 on a $40 bill. Now, many customers also pay a fire protection surcharge on their bills if they live in an area where hydrants are located. And that charge adds an additional $4.67 per month to those bills. Right now, a number of the most traveled intersections in Franklin Township, that's on the southeast side of Indianapolis, are closed while roundabouts are being built. And people who live and work in that area are no stranger to the construction. The intersections of Arlington Avenue and Edgewood Avenue, as well as the intersection of Franklin Road and Edgewood Avenue, they're closed. Detour routes include Emerson Avenue, Thompson Road, Southport Road, Hickory Road, and side roads through several neighborhoods. Now, despite all of these delays, most Franklin Township drivers we spoke with say it's worth it in the long run. A little bit of a burden on everything, people cutting through neighborhoods and that kind of thing. It's a little bit of an inconvenience. But uh, we'll get through it like always. After this construction is complete, two more roundabouts will be built in Franklin Township. One will be at the intersection of Franklin Road and Thompson Road, the other at Arlington Avenue and Shelbyville Road. We have more information on all of this and all the closures on the RTV6 app as well as our website, theindychannel.com. And Raphael, that's one thing you can be sure of once we get that temperature going up and drying out a little bit. Construction season getting into full swing. And we've got some beautiful blue sky over downtown Indianapolis. A lot of sunshine. But yeah, driving around this evening, likely going to have that AC cranking for you tonight. We've got those temperatures in the lower 90s right now in Greenwood, 93 in Muncie, and 87 in Indianapolis. So even though it's felt like about 90 degrees in the Circle City, as it does right now, we've yet to officially hit that 90 degree mark on the thermometer this season. 91 for you in Lafayette. That's what it feels like. It feels like 92 in Bloomington as we've got a little bit of that humidity in the air. While we don't have any rain across central Indiana, and you can see this complex of thunderstorms back in Illinois, that is quickly kind of winding down here. So if you're going to be heading off to Ruoff tonight, we got Dave Matthews Band in concert. Great weather there. It's going to be a little toasty though. Temperatures in the mid 70s through 10. Annie. The Supreme Court will decide on the future of DACA, the program that protects young immigrants from deportation. The justices announced today they'll take up this case next term, so a decision would likely come by next June. President Trump ordered an end to DACA in 2017, but federal courts have blocked the president from ending it immediately. DACA has protected about 700,000 people who were brought to the U.S. illegally as kids or came with families who overstayed visas. Well, a first of its kind rule is giving people a second chance. Pennsylvania is automatically sealing records on some arrests and convictions starting today. In most other places, you have to hire a lawyer or even go to court. And under the state's clean slate law, arrest and most nonviolent misdemeanor convictions will be sealed as long as the person doesn't commit another crime. And those records can often prevent people from finding a place to live or even landing a job. And that's where organizations like 70 million jobs are stepping in. 70 million because that's how many estimated Americans have some sort of conviction. Now the group helps with resume writing, finding jobs, and founder Richard Bronson has been there. He spent two years in prison for financial crimes. And Bronson talked about research showing formerly incarcerated people are as good of a hire, if not better than those without a record. Folks who have a record recognize that they have far fewer opportunities and therefore they are loath to do anything that might jeopardize a good thing. 
So what they end up doing is working very hard and they stick around longer. Well, 70 million jobs recently started using a new software to improve the chances of the formerly incarcerated getting hired. Crosscheck gathers human insight data and references and puts all the data in a report for companies. 70 million jobs is essentially using it though in reverse, gathering references and info that vouches for candidates with records, making it part of their resume. Now, this might be a resume that you would have thrown to the bottom of the stack because of where this person had come from, but now that they've gotten, you know, they've worked hard and they've they're <laughs> they've, they've served their time, and they've also got lined up folks that have mentored them and, and that sort of thing. Well, 35 states and more than 150 cities and counties nationwide have adopted ban the box or fair chance policies, and that's why employers will consider a person's qualifications before looking at past criminal history. All right, back to our lineup and finding care for older family members is getting way more expensive. So next on the now, what you need to consider to find the lowest nursing home prices. Keller, Keller and Keller. Welcome back to the Now Indy at 5.30. Amanda is back on Monday. It's a day that children at Riley Hospital for Children and their parents will never forget. About 30 Riley families met with former IndyCar and NASCAR driver John Andretti and his son Jared. John and Jared led a tour of the Andretti Auto Sports Race Shop on the city's northwest side, as you can see. John Andretti says meeting with kids from Riley is personal for him. Now tomorrow, the Andrettis will take part of the 23rd annual Kroger Race for Riley. It's Saturday at Newcastle Motorsports Park. The race is a big fundraiser for Riley. We're getting a new reality check on how much nursing homes cost these days. So the yearly out-of-pocket cost can be more than $70,000 and more than $100,000 a year in some places. And that's what a new study published in Medical Care and Review just found. So the researchers say that nursing home costs are rising faster than the costs of other medical care. The price can vary though a lot by state to state. And also if you go for a profit or a non-profit home. This may surprise you though, but the researchers found for-profit chains charge the lowest prices. Now the price difference is about $4,100 a year and there's not a significant difference in prices between independently operated nursing homes. But another thing to consider, researchers found nursing homes that are almost at capacity charge more too. And with these rising costs, you'll also wanna consider other options. There's all kinds of other um, creative senior living arrangements. If somebody can no longer stay at home, there's there's the co-housing movement that is really resurfacing to, you know, that are bringing people together to help them age in place in their own community with other older adults. There's multi-generational co-housing movements. Amy Clark with Review Site, the senior list, says that she doesn't think people are prepared for the huge sticker shock of long-term care. She says people need to be proactive and do the research. She also recommends that making a plan with your family while you're still healthy and don't need care yet is important too. Well, an insulin pump is being recalled because it could be hacked. The FDA says insulin pumps from Medtronic Mini Med could be connected wirelessly by another person. The hacker could change the pump settings to over deliver insulin or sometimes even stop insulin altogether. Patients using these insulin pumps need to switch to another model. Well, next in our lineup, as we look to send astronauts further into space, there's still the big question of what effect it has on the human body. Astronaut Scott Kelly is helping get answers. What we're learning from him about the aging process. Zaxby's. One school is rethinking how it helps students stay out of trouble. It's turning to yoga classes. Now the school principal says the number of suspensions went from 182 years ago to seven this past year. Corey Rangel has a look at how yoga is helping. Inhale, hold it like to your chest. At Fort Worthington Elementary and Middle School in Baltimore. Pick your head up. Exhale, 
Students start their day clearing their head. How you feel? Ramon Brown teaches the students various yoga moves and breathing techniques. Exhale full. To keep the kids focused and ready for the day ahead. With the exercises, we help them release energy. All right, so you letting go of a lot of energy. With the breathing exercises, we getting ourselves peaceful. We getting ourselves calm. Exhale to the right. For many of the students, this is a prevention to detention designed to keep them out of trouble. If a teacher notices a change in a student's behavior, they are then referred to take Ramon's class. If a kid is um, upset or going through a traumatic ex um, experience, they will come here, we will get them, uh, do some yoga exercises with them, calm them down so they can be peaceful enough to go back into their school environment versus going home and sitting on it being more and more upset. Uh -huh. Ten-year-old Anthony Whitfield ended up in class after seeing his mother get physically assaulted. Help me um, when you when you're mad or when you're depressed. You do breathe. It helps. Yeah, breathing sounds great, by the way. He has spent weeks in class with Ramon, who has an unexpected connection with the students. He himself got into trouble as a child after someone murdered his father. And I would see other people with their fathers, and it would, it would burn me up inside. So I was getting suspended from school. I uh, was fighting teachers. Ramon then started attending yoga classes at his school, led by the Holistic Life Foundation, the same organization he now teaches for. A full circle moment, he hopes, will shape other children and put them on the right path. I have been through what they've been through, what some of them been through before, so I can relate to them, so I don't judge them. I don't see myself as I'm better than them, because I understand, like, it hurts. His work appears to be paying off. Before Ramon started teaching the yoga program two years ago, the school had 180 suspensions. After the first year of yoga, it fell to 80. And this year, they only had seven students suspended from school. School principal Monique Dubai credits Ramon and the yoga program. I would say this is a key ingredient of um, what we're doing here um, in our school. What we're seeing um, is more so a prevention of our children getting to a place where they are fighting, getting to a place where they are destroying property, getting to a place where they are harming others. The program is in about 20 Baltimore schools with plans to roll it out to other cities across the country. In Baltimore, I'm Corey Rangel reporting. Churchgoers tend to be trusting and generous people. Unfortunately, con artists now realize that. Working for you, John Matteries shows you the newest scams to hit church offices. Many of us have been targeted with scam calls, pretending to be from the IRS or Social Security. But now scammers are targeting churches to take advantage of their generosity. They watch the money very carefully here at St. Andrew's Church. Yes, well, the call came in. So groundskeeper Donald Kincaid was stunned by what a caller claimed the other day, that the church had fallen behind on its electric bill. The gas and electric would be cut off within about a half an hour because the bill hadn't been paid. The caller's message couldn't have been more clear. He said unless the church paid the money immediately, they would shut the power off. The caller said to avert a shutoff, Kincaid needed to buy almost $1,000 worth of Green Dot Visa cards. Send it to them. Give them the number on the card. Confused and worried, he made one last call before rushing to the store. We called the number on the bill itself, and they said, no, we didn't call. Good thing. They almost fell for the power disconnect scam, which targets homeowners, small businesses, and now churches. It is not ethical and it is not fair to scam churches. Father John Agbage now wants to warn other church communities of this scam and he has a message to the scammers. We forgive them, but at the same time, I can also tell them to stop doing it. He says most churches don't have a dime to spare. Gas and electric companies will never call you threatening immediate disconnection. If you're behind in your bill, they'll send you notices in the mail so you don't waste your money. I'm John Matters for RTV6.
Thank you, John. And we've got a southwest breeze, but it is a warm one around 15 miles per hour with those temperatures well into the 80s in Kokomo. Bacon at 91, 87 right now in downtown. And tonight, yeah, we're going to continue with those lows, upper 60s to right around 70 degrees, partly cloudy skies. Really looks like the rain chances are going to stay over into Illinois, and that will be the case again tomorrow. So if you've got some outdoor activities, maybe you need to mow that lawn. It's looking pretty good here, at least as far as the rain chances. Those are going to be very low, but what you're going to have to battle is that heat and humidity. So if you are going to be out this weekend, make sure that you're drinking lots of water, taking breaks from the heat here, as we'll have temperatures into the 80s again tomorrow, but heat index values into the 90s. And also, don't forget, check that back seat before you leave the car during the day. Tomorrow afternoon temperatures 89 for you in Bloomington, 91 in Muncie and 87 degrees in Lafayette, but heat index will be around 95 on Sunday. Upper 80s again, a little better chance for a shower or thunderstorm, but again, it's only about 20% as we head into the evening and true cast shows by about 530 Sunday evening. That's when we start to get in on some of those showers to cool us down, but temporarily. Four day forecast there. Highs going to be back into the lower 90s Monday and Tuesday before those rain chances ramp up. Annie. Let's turn to the now news feed. The company, who is the largest maker of body cameras for police, says it won't sell facial recognition technology. Axon, making the announcement after an ethics board it created, said the facial recognition software isn't advanced enough just yet. Axon hasn't ruled out the use of the technology, though, in the future. Well, new concerns regarding lung cancer screenings. A task force says the current guidelines for testing may not work for African-American smokers. The group says that the requirements need to be expanded because they leave out vulnerable people who may not normally qualify under current standards. In a study of people with lung cancer, only 32% of African Americans would have qualified for screenings. Compare that to 56% of Caucasian people. Well, some airlines are now allowing people to either rebook or even cancel flights to the Dominican Republic. Now, this comes after, after at least 10 Americans have died while traveling to the country. There's Delta, American, JetBlue, and even Sun Country Airlines say that they will work with customers. Well, the effects of space travel on the human body is an area of huge interest in scientists. And thanks to astronaut twins Scott and Mark Kelly, researchers are gaining new insight. Chris Welch sat down with Scott Kelly to talk about the experiments that he was a part of during his one-year mission in space and what the biggest finding of all could reveal about our aging process. When astronaut Scott Kelly was preparing to head out on a year-long mission on the International Space Station, he immediately thought about his brother. Because this was going to be unique for NASA, the first uh, U.S. crew member spending a year in space, or nearly, turned out nearly a year, then maybe there was some value in uh, taking advantage of the fact that I had an identical twin brother. His identical twin happens to be former astronaut Mark Kelly, who would of course be on Earth during the same period. And Scott saw potential to learn something. I think as an astronaut, we have an obligation to promote science, to perform the science, to be engaged in science. It was fitting that the journal with the same name was interested. All they needed now was a team of researchers. Oh my God, well, I'm a total space nerd. <laughs> Susan Bailey is also a professor and biologist at Colorado State University. Her team was one of 10 investigations selected for the study that had one simple goal. To study uh, the effects of space flight on the twins. Scott Kelly soon became the guinea pig, as he calls it. A lot of medical tests, a lot of MRIs, CAT scans, Cognitive tests, blood draws, ultrasound. He even had little dots tattooed on his skin, so he knew exactly where those ultrasounds needed to be done. We now have the results, and there's one big headline. My telomeres got better in space. Telomeres are the caps at the end of a strand of DNA that protect chromosomes. And those telomeres shorten as we get older. It shocked researchers, but Kelly's got longer. People will say, well, is it the fountain of youth? Do What if we all go to space, you know? Sadly, it is not that simple. The minute Kelly returned to Earth, those telomeres shortened rapidly back to their normal length. You know, I don't think we're going to send people to space and they're going to live forever as a result of this, but there might be some 
you know, ancillary benefit. Bailey says it could open the door to a potential host of new experiments on aging. But for now, she's just glad she could play a role in a breakthrough study. It's like serving serving your country, serving, serving the astronauts, um, trying to do our part to really push space exploration forward. And it, life doesn't get much better than that. <laughs> Reporting in Houston, I'm Chris Welch. Amazing. Thank you so much, Chris. Well, finally in our lineup, the FDA is out with new information on certain diets and dog foods linked to a potentially deadly heart disease. The food brands involved and the simple action pet owners can take to prevent this disease. That's next on The Now.